it was a different tournament. It was strange because there were only eight of us. It was an eight player tournament and all of us were friends. So it felt like we were at a gathering of friends and we we're just competing amongst friends up until that finals where it really got real. The finals is where it got real for me. Going to a live event, what do you dislike the most about playing at live events? I think the thing I dislike the most is when the setup is very different from what I'm used to at home. And this happens mostly in heights. So like the height of the chair versus the height of the desk. It feels really weird when my elbows, for example, they can't, uh, I like to have them on the, not on top of the armrest, but around that length. And sometimes I have to put like my, my armrest, I feel like a, di a uh, my elbows feels like a dinosaur just stuck to my body because sometimes they don't give enough room in the booth. And sometimes the chair is just too low for a, a desk that is too high and it feels really weird, especially when you have to micro, which is to me a very important skill in StarCraft. Montreal, I believe, 2018. And you know, if you're playing on stage, you have like one of those super fancy DX racers, you know, the, the best one that you can get. And I'm sitting on the DX racer and it just feels so weird because the height difference, I just, the chair is too high. And then I look to my, to the right next to me is the cameraman sitting on this cheap, like $5 chair. And I'm like, hey, you want to switch? And then she looks at me like completely befuzzled. Uh, just, she was, she was so confused. And then she was like, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> and she looks so happy to have the DX racer, just chilling on the DX racer. And I got the $5 chair. I think the most important thing is just having the perfect height and being able to move your arms in the same way that you do at home. And and like WS, like guys who were doing WS and producing, they didn't like comment about not having DX Racer on stream. I don't think anyone noticed, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> not many people look at the chair the player is sitting on, especially during a match. This was a while ago, so I have to think hard about this one, but uh, I remember I was living in the root house back then, so I had uh, cats was kind of around to help me out with whatever I needed. Um, I can't say I remember who else was living at the house at the time besides root hydra, but I remember I was practicing mostly for special, well back then he was called major, and I was mostly practicing TVT because I was super confident in my TVZ. Back then, 3Rex Reaper was really strong and I was really good with it. So I was confident I could just use that to be champ in the finals if, if I had to, but I really thought I was gonna play special. The finals is where it got real for me because even the round of four, which was, I think the round of eight was in the normal, like the whole studio, the whole thing was organized in the house of the owner of View Studio. And then, and the round of four is where they put us in that studio, like the fancy looking one with really cold air conditioning and stuff. But I was playing Bayrada, which I, I thought there was no way I was gonna lose. And then in the finals is where I played someone that I thought I could lose against in the real looking studio. That's where it felt like it got real for me. Chupando manga, vem pra cima aquela azul! Não, e aquela azul, ele... Um, so first thing I do is I wake up, and the most important thing is to have a really nice breakfast. So I go straight to breakfast in my pajamas and everything, sleepy face, and I have a great uh, breakfast. And after that, I'll go back to the room. And if I'm still feeling kind of tired, I'll take another nap. If not, then I'll take a shower and head to the venue to practice. And then the more games I can get in before my match, the better. 
as long as it's like not like too many games, in which case you'll feel kind of exhausted by the time of your match. Is there such a thing as over practicing? Like, well, everyone's different, right? If you look yeah. at Beyond, Beyond was a world champion, and all he did was play, play, play at twenty four seven. He would get he would get to the venue as early as he could, and then leave as late as he could. Personally, I feel kind of exhausted if I play for more than like five, six hours uh, without a break. Mm -hmm. So that's the amount of time I'll usually try to play before a match is around like three, four hours and then allow the rest of my energy to be uh, harnessed to focus on my match. What I'll do is I'll just try to warm up, just feel like I'm playing a ladder game and not be nervous at all. If that's not working, then what I'll do is I'll listen to some jazz. I really like jazz, especially um, some jazz with like a rainy background kind of thing to like really calm you down and, and chill. That is one thing that I, I'm not very good at, was that I've never been good at, was grounding myself before a, a match. And I think uh, a lot of the athletes do in normal sports and it works and people should have something they can ground themselves on some activity oh this was uh this was galactic process and the thing i most remember about this um, era was that galactic process was probably the best map i ever had for 3x reaper and i don't think i ever lost a single zerg on this map by doing this build so i was like okay well it's already 1-0 for me that's what I thought. Basically. I remember, okay, I remember New Gettysburg for sure. This, I remember this being a, probably the best map for Zerg in the pool. Either that or Apotheosis, which I think was in the same map pool. I might be wrong. Anyway, I remember that uh, that was like an instant pick for him, New Gettysburg, and I was pretty sure that I was, uh, was going to play in a back foot in this game. So I think I ended up playing 2 on one but I'm not sure because it was really popular at that time. I just thought it was a terrible map and I was okay if I lost here. So I just played it completely stress-free. Like I had no pressure on me at all because I was comfortable losing and I thought it was expected for me to lose on this map. As a pro, is that common? Well, it's hard for me to say because this only ever happens in best of sevens mm. and where you don't get vetoes and sometimes best of fives. Uh, and I don't get to those very often, but I think a lot of people feel that, you know, some maps, they're very hard and they'll try to pull weird builds there. And if they lose, they're okay with it. I think it's normal. It's just, you, you have to accept that you can't veto it. So you just got to do your best or pull some funky stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I, was, I ended up going two on one because I think those were the big that was around the time where Beyond was huge, right? And um, that was basically his two go-to builds was two on one and three, three X Reaper. And especially on this map where it was kind of close by air, uh, two on one was particularly good. I remember Cham always played Roaches against two on one, so I wasn't counting on dealing much damage. That's why I went for a fast three CC behind it. It's uh, like from the map choices, it's all according to plan. You know, lose on New Gettysburg and Apotheosis, I'm okay. King Sejong, I might be a little bit worried because I know it's a good map for me and I have to win here. And if I don't, I'll be down 3-2, which gives him a lot of freedom on the to choose the next two builds. So... And I'm confident that I will win, but at the same time, I'm nervous of the pressure that I'm putting on myself to win on this map. When I think Copa America the Finals 2016, I remember Frost. The game on Frost, which was the last game, uh, that, was, that was the most memorable one. By this time, the thing about best of seven game uh, series is that by the time you're in the fourth or fifth game, you're already in the zone and you're just treating it like a ladder game because you only really get nervous in the first or maybe the second game and then after that you're already um, you're already treating it like you're in ladder again except until you get to the match point 
where then nerves start kicking in again when you start thinking that you're going to win the series that's when you get really nervous so i think in this map i'm pretty chill i'm confident it's a good map for Terran. i'm cool i messed up man <laughs> i i got surrounded and when i lost that i thought maybe i had lost a game like i had thrown the game but the thing about uh, I had five Raxes, and the thing about uh, the Rax Reaper is that you can make up the five Raxes of one base. So I thought if I just keep smashing the Reaper button and just microing really well, I could still win. Uh, <laughs> this was super clutch. I, I, I was okay, but this is how I knew I was in the zone. Okay, I was really focused on microing. I didn't give up for a single second. I just make sure, keep making Reapers, keep my green. If I hold, I can still win. That kind of feeling. Uh, wow. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> yeah. I think when I finally killed this push was when I started feeling like, oh shit, I held. Like, am I actually win this, you know? And then I think I might have made some micro mistakes. I'm not sure. But at this point, I feel like I did it. And I'm like, okay, don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up is all I'm thinking. Just chill, just wait for a moment, make some more Reapers, don't go anywhere, don't get surrounded. And I'm like, okay, let's not get run by it, you know, I'll check. I don't wanna mess this up. So I split my Reapers, I remember that much. And then I did end up messing that up because I split my Reapers and because I didn't wanna get run by it. And ended up losing a few Reapers for free. Uh, which made my life a bit harder than it should have. Um, but I, I was making Reapers 5 at a time by then. So I think at this point, I knew that I had the game in the bag as long as I don't mess it up. But yeah, losing the Reapers kind of sucked. It made me a bit worried for sure. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I won this game. Okay. Well, the main thing that I learned was that 3x Reaper was good against Cham. <laughs> I've been doing it to him ever since, and I kind of feel bad because it's been four years, and I'm still doing this build against him, and it still works. Really? What do you do with the plate and the prize money? Just go to the bank account. I mean, I don't know. I, I was living pretty comfortably back then because I wasn't paying rent at the root house. I, I only had to worry about food. <laughs> So all the money I was getting was going straight to my bank account. For me, it was never about the money. Like any money that I went, it was like get paid. And I'm like, okay, cool. I got paid. What's the next tournament?